Hello again, folks. This Friday, the eyes of the world will once again be on China. But it won't be with a critical eye, at least not for the world's host broadcasters and sporting fans. It'll be through rose-coloured glasses, as the opening ceremony marks the beginning of the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. It was only 14 years ago that Beijing held the Summer Games. Yet despite appalling human rights abuses, crackdowns on press freedom, a hostile takeover of Hong Kong, near daily assaults on Taiwan, plus trade strikes and cyber warfare against many other nations around the world, including Australia, it gets to host one of the world's biggest sporting spectacles again. The International Olympic Committee has lost all of its credibility, not just by ignoring those points, but rewarding China by giving it a global platform of which the IOC should be ashamed. Beijing only got the Winter Games in 2015 by default. No one else could afford it. Oh, Kazakhstan tried, but lost in the final vote. Since then, according to Human Rights Watch, in seven short years, Chinese authorities have committed mass abuses against the Uyghurs, Tibetans and other ethnic groups. They have eliminated independent civil society by persecuting human rights activists, feminists, lawyers and journalists. The government has eviscerated a once vibrant civil society in Hong Kong, expanded tech-enabled surveillance to significantly curtail the rights to expression and allowed the use of forced labour in violation of international law. This all under the leadership of President Xi Jinping. How is that acceptable? And what does the IOC think of it? Very little. It always makes the feeble response that sport and politics don't mix. It likes to say it prefers political neutrality. Forget morals or any willingness to differentiate between good and bad. As long as profits roll in, let's turn a blind eye to genocide, seems to be the charter. As for the main sponsors, including Coca-Cola, Visa and Omega, Amongst others, well, aren't they just helping China to whitewash or sportwash its atrocities? This is absolutely no attack on athletes and their teams, by the way. I've covered three Olympic Games as a journalist, none in China, mind you, and I've marvelled at the athleticism on display and the breathtaking abilities of superhuman performers. But those competitors will be under constant surveillance this time. American athletes have reportedly been told to bring burner phones to try and avoid that. Athletes won't say anything publicly anyway because, wait for it, IOC rules forbid them from publicly expressing views on human rights on the Olympic podium. This is former DFAT Oz China scholar Andrew Phelan on this very point. China will be watching very closely to see if any athletes uh, speak out or demonstrate in any way, shape or form, including on the, uh, on the victory uh, rostrum. When Chinese tennis star Peng Shui, a three-time Olympian, disappeared from public view after accusing former Vice Premier Zhang Gao Li of sexual assault, the IOC held a video call with her and said she appeared to be safe. We could not feel her being under pressure, was the direct quote from IOC President Thomas Bach. And that was that. Forget its dubious authenticity. Carry on was the response. The Women's Tennis Association suspended all of its tournaments in China in a show of solidarity for Peng. But for the IOC, nothing to see here. The US, UK, Canada and Australia all announced diplomatic boycotts of the Games, which is more symbolic than anything else, but it was something. US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said allowing Beijing to serve as host city makes a mockery of the Olympic Charter. The Games are supposed to be seen as a force for good, a host country's proud moment in the spotlight, which should give its cities a chance to showcase its achievements. But by going back to China and so soon after the last one, the International Olympic Committee has disgraced itself and gone the way of FIFA, proving money is king. Folks, please support this channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. I'll see you next week.